Hey, it's Joel. This is new glass for the really big $38,000 3D printer. You know it's broken on there from before. They were nice enough to send some new glass. Uh, unfortunately, they sent the vertical glass. I'll see if I can lay it flat. That's a dad joke, and you heard it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Big thanks to Thangs for sponsoring this episode. Head to thangs.com and Stick around to find out more. Yeah, this is, the, this is the new glass for the 3D Platform 300 Series Workbench Pro. I've already got started. It's got these little supports at the bottom. They kind of hold it up. It's got these, uh, these metal straps here to hold it up. So here's what I need to do. New glass in here. I'm told I've got two sheets, two glass sheets. I've got one brand new glass sheet and I've got a used glass sheet. Obviously, both are going to be better than what's on there right now. So here's what I need to do in my humid hot garage. It's so hot! Get these off. Get these off. Lay it down carefully. Open it up and inspect it. And then call on my wife, who's way more responsible than I am, to help me remove the old glass, put new glass on, and then we're going to print in PETG. I can't wait. Let's get to it. Got these. One down. There we go. Look at all those screws. That's fantastic. All right, it's uh, top is loose. I'm gonna move the camera so you can get a better look. You can take a peek at the same time that I do. I'm excited about that. Wow, that is thick foam. <laughs> oh, geez, that is a new sheet of glass. Wow. It's so heavy, and right below it is another sheet. Okay, we need to talk. We're at that point where so, so much can go wrong, and I really don't want it to. The next step in getting that glass replaced is getting the old glass off the machine. It did have some defects in it, as you've seen before. We have to be extra careful in that. There's gonna be some, so, some little hold downs on the four corners, Gonna have to undo those, and then the heater below it might be kind of stuck to it. We're gonna have to be careful, just kind of peel that off, and then we need to get the glass off vertical and set down super carefully. And then what we need to do is measure this, find out which side is the long side, and then put it on the printer correctly. Once this is on, then we can breathe a sigh of relief because it's sturdy, it's on the printer, it's big, it's where it's supposed to be. So then we'll attach the four corners and then I'll get out the, the device to level it. What is that? It's a little, uh, it's a gauge. <laughs> I forget the name of it. But that gauge that, uh, that goes down the bed and then I can level it and I can use those push-pull screws. Once we get it leveled, then we'll start a print in PETG and we'll see what happens. There's one of these in each corner. It's two screws and there are two and a half millimeters each. So what I need to do is then Remove them. Oh no. The heated mat under here that heats the bed is huge and it kind of sticks to it. So you have to kind of peel it away. But because the glass is already compromised, the mat comes off and the glass is already broken right there. I'm gonna get some gloves and then I think what I'll do is cut through the blue tape and I'll remove it piece by piece. Uh, I'll then inspect the pad and make sure there's no more broken glass on it. That's 40 and a half, and this one's 41 and a half. Okay, so the long side is the Y axis. Good to go. Wow, here we go. This is the heated mat and uh, it's very big. It moved just a little bit and it looks like it's got some padding here just to keep the underside from getting too warm. It looks like there's a little bit of broken glass here. I'm gonna get the vacuum and clean this up. Oh, let me go get my wife. She's way more responsible than I am. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Once it's on here, I can adjust it. Yay, we did it. Thanks, honey. We did it. 
We did it. The glass bed is on. Surprisingly, it wasn't nearly as heavy as I thought it would be. Obviously, my weight judgment was based on two panes of glass and a, you know, a wooden crate that they shipped it in. So now I got to get these on. We got to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. And then P-E-T-G. A few moments later. While we're at this point, I know that bed level probably isn't thrown off by that much. There are four corners of the bed held in by these clips and it went in just fine. I would imagine we're good, but on a big machine and I don't wanna take that chance. So I'm gonna get this on and we're just gonna verify that level's okay. And then once we do, then we can print. You know what, I got the bed level, uh, but there's this, well, I thought you might like to see this. This is the HFE 300 hot end. This is the, this is the big mamma jamma. This is the one that extrudes crazy amounts of plastic. It's fantastic. What I wanna do, I wanna replicate what caused the fracture in the first place. And this has a two millimeter nozzle on it. I'm gonna put the one millimeter nozzle back on this. Uh, I also have to loosen these screws to make sure and level the nozzle against the now level bed. But anyway, check it out. Crazy, right? Crazy. Eventually. Everything's warmed up. I'm ready to load filament and there is no way. No way, none. I am not gonna print PETG with at least some sort of interface layer in there. And they gave me Magigoo. So I'm gonna use Magigoo. And if you wonder where that pawn printed originally, it's right there, right where that discolored piece is. So, uh, Magigoo time. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. Here, I'm gonna get you for a closer look. I'm gonna set up that GoPro. We're gonna get that time lapse, and then we'll come back. Honestly, this is kind of exciting. I'm kind of really excited. Bangs is a brand new 3D model community that is powered by Geometric Search. It is the brainchild of FISNA, whose technology bridges the gap between the physical world and the digital world of software by enabling 3D models to be treated and analyzed like any other code. This means Thangs makes it possible to search for matching items or similar items based on 3D geometry. Yeah, even parts with complex assemblies can be used for search criteria. Private teams can collaborate on things as well, letting users share ideas and iterate on designs, keeping track of model versions and revisions. Think of it like GitHub for 3D models. Head over to things.com and sign up today. Here we go, this is it. I, I, I rushed downstairs, I woke up, I brushed my teeth and I came down here and I am excited to see what happened. This is it, here we go. Like, I haven't touched it. I literally haven't touched this thing. Ah! <laughs> well, that was easy. Came off just fine. Oh, just fine. Print quality is fantastic. Look at it. This is great. Oh, this is great. Well, listen, we've done it. We've, we've taken off the old broken glass. We cleaned up the glass. We put on new glass. I swapped out the nozzle for a one millimeter instead of the two millimeter. We leveled the bed, we leveled the nozzle against the bed, and then we printed that old G-code. Well, Chuck, look at this. You've got one of your Filament Friday pawns in PETG, print on the big machine, and it looks glorious. So moving forward, it looks like what I need to do is just coat the bed in magic goo, which is fine. I will do that if it means prints lifting off the bed like this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Thanks for everyone who supports me over at Patreon, and we'll get an After the Five going really soon. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more, print all you can, and as always, high five. It's awesome. Not a lot of room. Not a lot of room. Oh.